program is brought to you by Rogers Anyplace TV. Enjoy exclusive content for free. Visit RogersAnyplaceTV.com. Hi, I'm Dion. I'm a volunteer here at Rogers TV. And when I'm not here at Rogers, you can find me roller skating in TV production and audio um, seemed like a really nice way to get a chance to learn some of it. I love playing with sound and video and, and things like that. Um, get to to play with a lot of different equipment um, and and learn. Mustang Sports on Rogers TV. I'm Wendell Clark with a word about winning. We all know it takes a team effort in any sport and with any challenge. You can be a part of the winning team that shuts out impaired driving. Whether you're out on the town or just hanging out with friends, drink responsibly. Always have a plan for a safe ride home for yourself, your family, and your friends. You'll be helping to shut out impaired driving. Visit ArrivalLive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive. Drive sober. Back to one on one. I'm Jess Brady. We are at Bull and Barrel London speaking with some of the most well known country stars in our region in Canada. And I'm joined now by Eric Etheridge from Sarnia. Thanks so much for coming in today. Jess, thank you for having me. So you are a burgeoning star. People know your name. It's getting out there. Uh, and you've had you had some great hits. You're part of a, a few great programs that we're going to talk about. But let's rewind a little. Tell sure. me how you got into, first of all, music, yes. because maybe you didn't realize right away that this is something you wanted to do right yeah well I got into music because my older brother was always into music I wanted to be you know as cool as my older brother and uh, so he played he played guitar for a long time and I eventually picked up guitar uh, in about grade nine I'd say and then as and just sort of kept with it all the way through high school um, found out I could sing probably around age 17 or so and carried that with me into university here in London Fantastic. And so also, you were, you were saying before, before like during the break, that you know your family's really talented, like all your, your siblings, <laughs> well. you know, they're like super smart, yeah. uh, you know, they're musical, yeah, and they're also into sports. For sure. And now you specifically were into football, right? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I played football in high school, um, growing up at Sarnia, and was fortunate enough to make the Western football team, and that's what brought me to, to London for four years which was a fantastic opportunity playing with Coach Marshall and the Mustangs. So that was, uh, that was exciting, absolutely. And yeah, I mean, we, we've been sort of, we, we were busy as kids for sure. Like we were into sports, music and academics for sure. And yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting because, you know, not often do you find someone who's like super talented at <laughs> well, thank musical you, thank you. and the musical side of things and then also in athletics, right? right. So, I mean, yeah. was that kind of strange to try and juggle that or did you find it difficult? I would say that it, you know what, I think things didn't really all occur at the same time, you know, where I was, I, my high school life was really focused on sports and academics and music started, started then, but it really started to develop as I got through university and even more so as I continued in education, I started to develop music even more and more. Um, so I didn't really have to balance those things, which is kind of nice, but now I'm finding the balancing act is, it's difficult. <laughs> Certainly, yeah. Definitely, yes. as you've gotten older and you know, you've yeah. gone on to uh, a couple of other things, and we'll, we'll get to that. Like, sure. do you find that you know, when you were in in football, did it? Are there parallels between performance on stage and performance at TD Waterhouse Stadium? Absolutely. Uh, I, I'm grateful to be or have had the opportunity to play at Western, um, and just to learn from the coaches there, which were fantastic. But I feel that one of the most important things I learned playing football was just the work ethic, um, how to perform under pressure, uh, how to be organized, and how putting in hard work tends to um, kind of correlate with success, you know. So uh, it, was, it was a great experience that way. I think it's 
really helped in the, on the music side of things. Definitely, and I mean, <laughs> we joked a little earlier that you know it doesn't doesn't hurt to have performed in front of like thousands of people right, at TD Waterhouse, yes. and then when you're on stage, you've got all yeah. the people that are watching you, so it helps out. Eh? Yeah, it definitely helps with the stage fright yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. always necessarily 100% set on the music path, right? There was, when you were finishing up at Western with your undergrad, there was another option that you potentially were going to go for. Explain that a little bit. Yes. Well, I did my degree in kinesiology at Western. And in my fourth year, by this point, I'd been playing in bars around London and, and performing quite a bit. And I had gotten into chiropractic school in Toronto. So as the fourth year went on, there was this debate of whether should I, you know, go into school and be a chiropractor or should I focus my time and energy on music right now? Right. I, uh, about, up until about a week before chiropractic school, I was like, I'm, I'm going, to, going to chiropractic school. And then, a week yeah, and then a week before, I changed my mind completely. I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be a musician. One week. Uh, yeah, and one week before. It was getting <laughs> down to the wire. Yeah. And uh, my, my family, was, they've been great. They've been supportive through all the flip-flopping. And um, I, I talked to a good friend of mine who was a chiropractor. He still is a chiropractor, but he was my chiropractor. And he, he just said to me, why don't you do both? And I thought he was crazy, but I was, I was like, sure. Let's, okay, let's try that. Uh, yeah, we'll do both, you know. Right. I got into chiropractic school. I ended up loving it. And the first two years, it was... Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to play much music. It was so busy, so intensive, and really hard, um, and, and just required so much of my time and energy that music sort of fell by the wayside a little bit. It wasn't until third year of chiropractic school when a friend of mine, um, her, her name's Jordan Elliott, uh, she's now my manager, as a mu music manager, but she had called me in the middle of the winter and was saying, you know, Eric, I really think you should do music. At this time, she had heard one of one of my songs I had recorded a few years earlier. And I, my first reaction was just, no way. Are you serious? I'm three quarters of the way through this program. I'm, I'm going to be a chiropractor. So she called me back again. She's like, I really think you should do this. You know, like, you, you're, you're really good. You should try. So I still, I turned her down again. And uh, so after some time, I, I, I gave in. She asked me, you know, have, do you have any songs that you have, have written that we could try? And so. I, in fact, I did, and, and we recorded those, and that led to my first performance as a, uh, a country artist, really, at Rock the Park London. Fantastic. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So. It's amazing, and like you had a great band of like local, local people that were helping you out. It's yeah. neat to see the community connections of people in this neck of the woods. Right? There's so many talented people. For sure, absolutely. I actually didn't even have a band at the start, so when we, when we were asked to play Rock the Park, yeah. They were like, you, okay, you need to get a band together. And, and I was like, well, wow. and we had about six weeks to prepare. So um, my brother was in a rock band for a long time. And so I, was, I asked them, you know, can you guys help me out? And they obviously were like, yeah, we'll help out for one show. Fantastic. And we brought in another uh, local London guy, Scott Wilkinson. He plays piano for me. And then another uh, London guy, his name's Matthew Piche. He's a, he's a fiddle player. So. He had been in a, a Christian rock band for a long time. It was in Nashville, and they were from the London area. So we had some great musicians on, on board. And as it turns out, since that show, we've, we've had the same band, same guys ever since. So, yeah. So. It's like your little clan. You right, guys exactly. Your <laughs> band of brothers, yeah. Right on. So. And so there's been some really exciting things that have been going on for you recently. Uh, and it's very, like, perfect that we're talking about this because yeah. it is, you know, CCMA awards that are happening around right now. Country Music Week is going on. Uh, you're in the CCMA Discovery Program, yes. which, and like, tell us, explain a little bit how that is helping you right now as you hone your craft and right. really work on your, your, your music. Yeah. It, it's helping in so many ways. Um, I'm really grateful, really thankful to be a, a part of the CCMA Discovery Program. So what it is, is the CCMA will, um, take applicants from all over the country once a year and they'll narrow it down to six people, six emerging artists that they feel uh, that they want to help develop and push along the way. And so those top six people they'll take to Toronto and, and kind of run them through like a musical boot camp, uh, so to speak. So I was lucky enough to be selected amongst the top six, which is just, I'm just 
it's fabulous. Just pumped to be in, you know, and everybody in the program is extremely talented. So to be among those people, it's it was a learning experience in and of itself. Um, yeah, they they basically spent a week with us. We met the heads of record labels. We met radio promotional people. We met agents, PR people. Um, so we learned about the business side of music as well as a lot of the creative side of music, and and um, it, it was so beneficial in that respect. The I would say what was probably even more important to me as an artist was uh, the validation of all the decisions I had made over the last couple of years, right? You know, when you're starting out as an artist and you're still trying to find your way, find your direction, you're not sure if your decisions are the right ones, you know? And for me, that was a, a moment where, you know, I felt like it was on the right track. Absolutely. Something else that shows that you're on the right track is that just uh, back in July, you were oh. named Artist of the Month from the Country Music Association of Ontario. Congratulations. Thank you so much. That's, that was, that was a, a really nice surprise. You know, I, I was contacted about a week earlier from the CMAO, and it's been awesome to have the support from the CMAO and the CCMA. The, the folks of both organizations have just been fantastic. So, yeah, thank you. Find a road with no name, lay back in the slow lane. Skies dropping Jupiter all around us like some old train. We be rolling down the windows, I bet you be catching our second wave. Cause we don't have to go home, we can leave the night on. We can leave the night on. Well, before we go, we have to do something called Fast Facts. Okay. And it's just so people can get a little bit of an, you know, understanding of who you are, yeah. things you like, things you don't sure. like, things like that. So, okay. here we go. I have my list. Okay. Very first one, cats versus dogs. Cats. Okay. Coffee versus tea. Coffee. Nice. How do you take your coffee? One cream. One. Just simple. One. Yes. Simple. All right. Just uh, <laughs> favorite TV show? Uh, right now... It would have to be Stranger Things on Netflix. Getting a lot of good buzz. Though. I know, just right? Just renewed it's for another season. I so heard. You're yes, in luck. I will be there. Yes, <laughs> not on the season, but I'll be watching it. There you go. Uh, favorite football team? Ooh, I'm gonna have to say the Western Mustangs. Hello. Yeah. yeah. So they will always be my favorite football team. Uh, if we're talking like NFL, I don't even have one. I don't know. I can't, I can't decide to, who to root for. So Right on. Yeah. Not a bandwagon guy. Right. I can't. I don't know which bandwagon to jump on yet. So. <laughs> well, you know what? Just stick with what you know. Then yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, let's see. Batman versus Superman. Superman. Hands down. All right. Yes. Yeah. Man of Steel. Yeah. Uh, favorite vacation spot. Favorite vacation spot. Huh. I'm going to say Nashville, Tennessee. Very good. Yeah, Very yeah. apt, given yes. the industry that you're in. Yes, yeah, that would be the only vacation. So, well, they're working vacations, but yeah. Right on. Yeah, Still yeah. pretty cool to go right, down there. Right, yes, like, absolutely. See yeah. everybody. Yeah. Awesome. And let's see, last one. Let's say your favorite artist that you would maybe want to work with in the future. Ooh, my favorite artist. I would say Canadian wise, my favorite artist. I'd have to go with Dallas Smith. Right He's on. A Dallas Smith fan. Uh, I, you know, and uh, I actually had a chance to meet him um, back at the CCMA Discovery Week in, in April there, and just a very down-to-earth guy. Um, he's got a great work ethic. You know, he's he's built a career, uh, a great career for himself, um, and in both in two different genres, you know? So it's a very, very impressive guy. And yeah, it'd be great to work with him at, at some point. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I bet you it'll happen. Hey, and I hope when, so. it, when it does happen, when all these great things start coming to fruition as they already have started, uh, where can people keep track of you? Like online, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram? Uh, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, you can check out my website at ericetheridge.com. And I'm on Twitter uh, and Instagram and uh, yeah, inst Instagram and Twitter at Eric Etheridge Music and on Facebook as well. It's just facebook.com slash Eric Etheridge Music, I believe. And uh, all, a lot of our stuff is posted on there. You, generally, the Facebook page is great for just keeping up to date where our shows are and new videos, new updates. Uh, and usually on Fridays, I'll do what I call Facebook Live Fridays, where I go on, go Facebook Live, and I just start playing covers for people and, awesome. and kind of interacting with, with people from, yeah, from all over. That's the best. So. All right. Cool. Well, we've got all the information. People can track you down. Awesome. Eric, thank you so much for coming in. Jess, thank you for having it. me. Awesome. Well, that marks the end of another episode of One on One. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.